as I was going up from town, I met the grain trains rolling down. Every day a hundred trains, every train a hundred cars, every car a hundred tons, every ton a hundred sacks, every sack ten thousand grains. And that's what cities get from trains. Some politicians lacking brains said in voices dripping sweet, we don't really need these trains, railroads all are obsolete. They're union strong, it makes demands, they guard their yards with railroad dicks who kick our cops clean off their lands, do not like our politics. As I was going up from town, I met the grain trains rolling down every day. A hundred trains, every train, a hundred cars, every car, a hundred tons, every ton, a hundred sacks, every sack, ten thousand grains. And that's what cities get from trains. So the politicians passed some laws, screw more money off the trains, and deeper dip their pudgy paws in more control of railroad gains. The railroad said, get off our land. They went on strike to show their peak. The grain train stopped their rolling, and the city starred within a week. As I was going up from town, I met the rain trains rolling down every day. A hundred trains, every train, a hundred cars, every car, a hundred tons, every ton, a hundred sacks, every sack, ten thousand grains. And that's what cities get from trains. burned and rose and battered down the state house door and all those fat politicos were killed and eaten by the poor and with the city out of joint and no more politician men the railroad said they proved their point and sent the grain trains down again as i was going up from town i met the grain trains rolling down every day a hundred trains every train a hundred cars every car a hundred tons every ton a hundred sacks every sack ten thousand grains and that's what cities get from trains thank you leslie fish Good morning, wandering beekeeper here. It is a uh, it is an interesting morning. Let me tell you, it's been a day, it's been a week, it's been a year, it's been a life. Ah, I am wound up tighter than your top E string right now. Don't mind me. We are in the middle of Eurovision playoff season, and those of you who are not Eurovision fans, I feel your pain. I've had to live with sports fans during playoff season, and I understand what they all, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, I'm, I'm excited about Eurovision. This is my first year doing the Nationals. It's been a hell of a ride. Um, I have learned more about modern European culture in the past couple of weeks than in the past couple of years. I've I've been just plunged into the middle of a lot of this, a lot of the politics that goes on around Eurovision and around the competition and around who's in it. We have a situation. Um, <clears throat> There, well, let me just, we're going to go over to the game screen in a, in a minute anyway. Let's go on and at least get a game on the on the screen here. You know, and I, it did, does say that I'm going to be doing trains in Minecraft. Well, you've already had trains. You had Leslie Fish singing about the green trains. That chorus, by the way, is a heck of a thing. You got to have a good, uh, good strong breath coming in to do uh, that. That that rolling thing there. Wow, it's it's a tough one. Takes practice. And um, yeah, my views are on the screen. Let's just go on and do a banner drop here. 
There was a, a banner drop last night. I don't know if people caught it, but one of the orchestral maestros, bearing in mind the Italian National Festival, the San Remo, uh, still uses a live orchestra. Eurovision itself has not used a live orchestra in years. Um, it's a di very different experience. You're not getting the prepackaged backing tracks that you'll have at Eurovision, uh, where you get essentially the stage presentation of the radio cut. You're getting a full orchestral arrangement, and there is a maestro, and this is Italy, and a, an orchestral maestro is a big deal. I mean, the title does come with some respect just to, to begin with, the fact that it takes a hell of a lot of work to get to that position, to, be, uh, to make it to, to maestro. And then these people get some serious respect. They get introduced at the beginning of the track of, the, of, of each act. And more often than not, the performer will give their bouquet to the maestro. Well, this one guy... Yeah, I realize I've laid an awful lot of foundation. I'm riffing for time to make sure I don't get a copyright strike for Leslie Fish. I cannot see the current copyright holder managing to do any sort of a filing and i did cite the artist and the publisher um it's not a complete proper citation but it'll have to do but i'm also riffing for time just to make sure twitch isn't suppressing my sound um Y'all will, will bear with me for a second, but uh, yeah, important to conclude the story too late, you know, make a long story short, too late. This, part uh, this particular maestro, on his last appearance of the night last night, when he took his bow, the camera cuts to him and he gets to take his bow, he puts his hand over his heart, and he has written on the back of his hand, Free Palestine. And I'm like, dude, that is, that's brilliant. Thank you. That was a banner drop they could not cut out. They could not block. Beautifully done. Hand to his heart, Free Palestine. Thank you, thank you so much for that. Last night was fucking brilliant. Uh, there is an adult warning on this um, stream. There is language, there are drug references, there's all sorts of shit. Just, just bear with us, just roll with it. What's shameful unless it seems so to the audience, as Aristophanes once said. He was a heinous old fart. Um... I think we probably riffed long enough. I'm looking at a session of nine minutes at this point. Uh, sadly, only one viewer right now, which I'm pretty sure is the coffee bot. Let's see. Looks like I got a few bots here, you know, scraper bots or something. I need to do something about that. Let's see if I've got any quick action, any actions pending. A Q. Hey, evil. It's me. Good to see you. How you doing? Welcome. Now, yeah, there's been... Uh... Okay, so, political rant, Eurovision rant. Let's get on to some Minecraft here. Sleepy. Yeah, I'm... I'm... I'm a caffeine achiever. Oh, hey, there's the uh, the A line coming into the station. Let's go grab that because I want to ride it around. The A line now makes all stops on both loops. We are in the Create Mod Suite. Uh, this is in Minecraft 1.20.1. 
uh, create, create trains and rails, create uh, pretty much uh, most of the create expansions. I've been working on this world for a while now. It's uh, my primary model railroading world. I've been slowly converting it into a proper railroad layout. Like here, we have a signal box up there and a diesel powered uh, station. I need to put a silencer on that to get that thump down a bit. That's really bad. I need to do something about that. The, the, the engine silencer does not actually stop the noise, but it does muffle it. So at least it should, it should be called a muffler. It's, it's, it's what it does. Let's see, so one of the things I plan to do, this is the A line. I'm th I want to put on the B line. This is a long trip around both loops now. Where, where the passen the one dedicated passenger train. Yeah, that one's got a muffler on it. It doesn't do much. I still haven't finished building out uh, Trading Point Station, but it's better. At least it has a platform. Uh, I want to put on another of these, MT of these uh, MTA trains on the opposite side of the loop from this one. And... Let's see, I'm going to need to stop this one over, lordy, probably a trap pyramid, and then put uh, the new train on at Henry, maybe? Alright, I'm going to have to move back through the uh, cars as we proceed on. i got to get back to the car with the driver in it. But I want to put another of these MTA trains on... So that I have, let's move back here. I got 10 seconds. Take a seat before we start moving again. So I'm in the car with the driver. That's just a blaze burner that's been given a schedule. Um, you can use mobs. Um, I was talking with somebody yesterday who prefers to put cats on uh, seats. You can put one of these train seat cushions behind the tra uh, train controls. Okay, we're going through the interchange here. I want to stop us at Trap Pyramid Station. We're coming up on an oasis. Yeah, but you can... Oasis also needs a muffler. That's really bad. I was playing with the sound off for a while and did not realize just how bad these damn generators are. Wow, that's a hell of a thumping. I do not like that at all. So you put one of these seat cushions behind the controls and then you can put any mob on that seat uh, that you can make sit. You know, cats will sit, wolves will sit, you know, I think putting a wolf on the seat uh, would be amusing. You know, one that you've uh, fed bones to and tamed. Get it a cap to uh, the stripes to match the co uh, match its collar. I do like the idea of kitties, haha. Yeah, Ginger did also over on uh, the Cobblemon server. Um, I play regularly on the Dynasty MC Cobblemon server, and I'm one of the builders there, and um, one of the new players there is, is real fond of, okay, give me your schedule. Alright, and Bronx Larry is stopped at Trap Pyramid Station. I'm going to debark. There is no platform here, we're just going to jump.
Uh, there is sort of a, you know, temporary thing here. Let's bounce to a couple of other stations real quick. Um, let's bounce back to Desert Farm. I'm going to go back along the line here real quick and see who I can catch where. Father, I don't have it in cover mode. There we go. In cover mode. Where am I? Who, who's where? All right, let's go over to Yongadi and see who's here, if anybody. Somebody here, about to be here, trying to figure out where. Here comes the Hornet. We can stop the Hornet here. Good, 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 good. I'm, I'm cool with that. Stopping the Hornet here would be good. I need to stop all the trains. Oh. To stop the Hornet here, anything coming up behind it will be stopped by... Okay, here's the Hornet coming in. And schedule, please. The train schedules are the key to this whole damn thing. Um, six minutes. Where the hell is it? Uh, let's try Bongity. Is anybody here? Uh, no. Where is... This is where I want to put... I want to make sure there isn't anybody here. Let's check the board. 30 seconds, the Bamboo Express. We'll board the Bamboo Express and ride it to Bo and then stop it there. Make sure I don't have a train at Henry because this is where I want to generate my new... Okay, hop on here. Create is about managing the trains. Each train has its own unique schedule, platforms are paired, and trains stop at them or not as their schedule tells them to. Now I just have to find the refinery train. Where is the refinery train? Wait, where is the damn refinery train? Let's try Oasis. Refinery loop. 30 seconds, refinery loop coming in. Brilliant, fucking brilliant. We've managed to catch it here. All right. I need your schedule, dude. Okay, schedule is obtained. All right, back to the cactus farm. Let's just take a second here. Ooh. Okay, so create is all about managing the trains themselves. They are independently mobile entities. Um... Create calls them contraptions. It's they, they're capable of movement in the world. They do have physical presence. You do not want to be in front of one. You, I've lost a few villagers that way. Um, I mean, I can't fence off the entire run. Try to do what I can. The um. Schedules are the are really the key to it. You've got to get the schedules coordinated. And the schedules determine where the train goes, in what order, and what platforms it will stop at, and which ones it will bypass. And it's it's all about controlling the train. Let me see here. I need a couple of things. Let's see, that's an empty schematic.
schematic. I need a schedule. Let's do an S-C-H-E. And I got lots of schematics. No schedules. I need to find a specific schematic. I need... The one already in my inventory. No. Okay. Um, pardon me having a, a senior moment. I'm 61 years old. I can make that joke. Schedule. I need a train schedule. Making a train schedule requires a sturdy sheet and a piece of paper. That makes four of them. Boop. There. I only need one. I'll drop the other three into the inventory system. Okay, so I have a blank schedule. We're going to take this blank schedule and I'm going to go on and set it up. Alright, first thing to do, I'm going to do is I'm going to update the schedule title and uh We got Bronx Larry driving the A train. The B train is going to be Tanisha from Queens. So we will start Tanisha at Henry Station. No, we can't start her at Henry Station. If we start her at Henry Station, hold on. She won't go ever go anywhere. We want to travel to Bow Station, which is the next one after Henry. Alright, we'll check that and wait for 10 seconds. Alright, from Bo, we go, that's the one with the refinery, we come on around the loop, we hit the crossover, and we go to Oasis. After Oasis, Next stop is going to be Desert Farm. Or, excuse me, no, it's going to be uh, Melon Barn. So the, the name is different. I gotta fix that. I really gotta fix that. I cannot change the name of the station. I need to change the name of the landmark. The landmark still says Desert Farm, and I gotta fix that. That's on the map. Um, to do item, to do item listed. Uh, after we go to Melon Barn, we go to Trap Pyramid. In Trap Pyramid, uh, we go to Castle. Castle, we move on to uh, Last Chance. Last Chance for, uh, uh, for tourist activity. We're leaving the desert. From there, we go to Yongity. This has gotten to be a very large loop, yes. Then to Bongity. And then we go on to a trading point. And last... To Henry. I'm back to Henry as the, the the home station, where the train started. Okay, there we go, and that gets all of that ready to go.
go. Okay, scheduled is ready to go. Schematic is in hand. Okay, now I came here to play trains, not to, you know, do scratch builds, so pardon me going creative here. Uh, also, to do item, edit, that has to change. That needs to be Melon Barn. There we go. Ch fix the name. Go to Henry. And here we are at Henry Station, where I have lots of lovely open straight track where I can punk down a new train. I'm going to find my station here. And I'm going to go create new train. That gets me the blue light, which tells me where to position my train. Rough click, that'll do. We need to raise it up one. No. Up. Thank you. No, that's not right, is it? It is. Okay. Alright, alright. A little befuddled. I'm also kind of ripped. Okay, there's part of my problem. Okay. A new, pers a fresh perspective is, is a useful thing. We will pull the train over so that the wheels align with the track. Thank you. I now need to push the train back until this first bogey. No, now don't do that. Stop that. Stop that. Behave. Come on. Why don't you want to... Uh. You need to, to go where I tell you to go. Thank you. We have a bit of distance. Looks like maybe three blocks here. Two... Uh, Peter Beagle, darn you. Okay, I gotta... He got that in my head with Last Unicorn, and I cannot seem to get to stop doing it. Okay. What I've done is to take our schematic. This is still a phantom. There is not actually a train here. There is no train here, it is just a hologram. I have positioned the hologram where the train should be. That, that blue line has to line up with the first bogey in the train. The train is facing the correct direction. Let us verify that. Where is our driver? I don't... So that's, that's a problem. The driver... The train is not facing the correct direction. We've made... Uh, we've checked that. Let's check these things. Rotate. Rotate. Okay. Train driver is now facing that direction. That direction is the correct direction. Train is facing the correct way. Recheck the alignment of the front bogey. The front bogey is, in fact, over the blue line. There is a bit of Japanese point and call going on here. Yes, it is an incredibly useful methodology for my particular type of neurodivergence. Uh, we open this. We see no bogeys, which is what we should see because we are still in hologram. We are ready to come out of hologram. Here we go. 
rent. And the light goes green. Light goes green, train is clean. We have green lights under the bogies. Going back, we look into here, we see six bogies. We assemble the train. And this becomes the MTA B line. We will check mark that. We have created a train, we have named the train. Now I need to get the trains all running again, including the new one. So, game mode survival, so that I don't accidentally do something I will regret. There is no undo in regular Minecraft. Um, I've been doing some work with World Edit lately, and that has been a thing all of its own. And the fact that it has an undo, well, I mean, it has to. All right, we are apparently riding the beeline down to Bow Station. That may be a problem because I think I left the Bamboo Express at Bow Station. Yeah, we are being held by being held by signals here. Um, I'm going to have to uh, force a dismount here. I'm sorry. All right. Off we go. Here we are with the Bamboo Express, which is at Bose Station, which means it's this schedule. And dang. Driver 8, check. Okay. Give you the schedule. You, and we will you now get the next schedule. I need to go to Yongity. At Yongity, go talk with the driver of the Hornet. to Trap Pyramid. Trap Pyramid, I need to speak unto driver of this train. Head over to Basis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. You want to come in? Give me a second. I'm working on it. I got to get uh, the refinery train moving again. Alpha. The A line and the B line are now both on the board. Look at that. Here's the Bamboo Express rolling in, rolling in. On its way to Mellon Barn Station. It's going to be a little bit before the board completely sorts. Here is the B line, which I'm going to grab take on around to Castle because uh, the next thing to do is to go see Castle Station. Oh. All right. I have successfully added another passenger train to the line. We are holding for signals. We are going to hold for signals off and on. It's, um, Things are a little crowded right now. It'll take a little while for the trains to regularize and redistribute around the loop. I may have to do a little manual adjustment, but the signals should take care of things they have so far. 
Signals are the other key to create trains. Simply put, they prevent collisions. You put signals on the track to divide the track into segments. There can only be one train in any given segment at any given time. Signals will not allow a second train to enter a segment. So putting your segment, making your segments long enough to fit all your trains is really important. You want to make the signal the segments at least as long as your longest train, preferably a bit longer, so you've got a bit of a buffer. I've had to move back signals a couple of times. Uh, adding the tanker car to the refinery train required me to move back signals at, uh, I think, three or four stations. Yeah, brushland, lava patch, the, yeah, that was a little bit of a fire there. Okay, I, uh, this is a build I completed since the last, since last week, so this is a new build that we're coming around to. I have completed the station at Castle Station, and I built a proper shed. Yes, it's diesel powered. That's really thumping obvious, isn't it? Welcome to the railway shed at Castle Station. We are on the passenger platform. There's our noisemaker down there. Thumping away. It bloody thing's got a muffler on it, and it's still this bloody loud. Um, I can't tell that the muffler does much. But we are in the shed here at Castle Station. This is all new build. Uh, we have the passenger platform on this side, uh, where we have the wore out brown seating that uh, is that same kind of muck brown that uh, all train station seats are that doesn't really show the stain. Oh, hi, here's the Hudson Hornet coming in. At some point, I want to add a passenger car to the Hornet, but the passenger car is kind of bored all the way at the back here. The, the thing is long. This is one of the reasons why, uh, yeah. The Hornet is it, it was originally put on just to have one more train on the loop, just to get the idea of the practice of balancing uh, the schedules. I've used Create Deco for the windows. That's the ornate iron frame window. I love that. It gives such a beautiful Victorian look. That sort of thing going on. We have the brick roof with the mesh in the uh, center over the line, more or less over the train line to let the smoke out. Things are a little off center. The uh, you know, that's just one of the things about train sheds, you know, the, the short platform over there is cargo loading. That seems patently obvious. We have cargo containers and we have uh, veg waiting to be loaded that's been brought in from the farm. Um, at a rural station, you would normally see this sort of thing. You'd have uh, crates of veg or in the early morning, you would... Uh, morning you would have uh, big cans of milk uh, where the farmers the dairy farmers would uh, bring in the big can, uh, cooled can uh, like nitrogen cooled canisters to of uh, the that morning's processed milk from their dairy farm there were dairy trains that specifically picked up the milk from the countryside and brought it into the city couple of storage barrels down there. Um, the detail on this is something I'm rather pleased with, where I've got, uh, the, got a ticket booth. There's an actual cabinet with a clipboard on top. We have uh, over here, there is an actual 
W.H. Smith's kiosk with a that would have a person working at it, amazingly enough. If you look in the barrel, there are some books. Uh, cheap reprint. We've got five cheap reprints, four trashy novels, and one copy of Conquest of Bread, because we had to have something decent for people to read. Come on. Do not cross. Big nail. Glowing red warning sign. Catwalk goes over... Oh, I need to turn off my jetpack so it doesn't interfere with the crossing here. Sink Catwalk, courtesy of uh, one of the Create Deco mods, I think. I think it's Create Deco. It might be Create Steam and Rails. Oh, yeah, we got a lot of warning signage here. Look, you know, fire, electricity, death. Okay, you know, I think we've, we've made it pretty clear. Okay, biodiesel is at 70,000. 70 buckets is enough to, to do for pretty much anybody, don't you think? Okay, so we're in the uh, maintenance area now. We come down those steps, and that lets us get under here. Danger of fire. And get to where the noisemaker is. Theoretically, you know, there is a muffler on it. You can see it. It just doesn't seem to do bloody anything. Um. Matilmo. Hey, greetings. Welcome. First time chatter. Welcome. I'm Wandering Beekeeper. And this is a very noisy diesel generator. It is from the Create Diesel Generators mod, which I actually recommend against. Uh, the support is very poor. Uh, went on the... Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's, there's no written documentation. The, the dev has no intention of producing any. And, and the, but it is handy because it lets me use this biodiesel that I'm producing. And um, power the station with it. Now, okay, here's the A line. You notice the doors don't open on this side. We are on the cargo platform and maintenance, cargo and maintenance platform, and we don't want uh, passengers getting off on this side. Let me walk down the other way here because I did not go underneath here. Um, there's the actual station, the, the station block, the, the, the gadget that runs the whole, the whole thing. Oh, excuse me, here. There we go. Castle station. Yeah, it only allows the doors to open on the south side. Oh, that is our refinery train coming in and giving us our fuel delivery. We are now tanked up. Tanker car here connects with a portable fluid interface in the track. You're from the Cobblemon server. Yeah, well, welcome over here. Yeah, the doors open automatically, but I've got them set so that they only open on the passenger side. Let's walk back over. Yeah, coming in. Oh, hi, the Bamboo Express, just in time. I want to catch this. Let's grab that. I had... I spent some time on the detail on this one. Um, I'm trying to get the whole world up to at least this level. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Um... The, on the stations, yeah, setting, uh, you actually go into the station itself and tell it which side to open the doors on. And, and it does, try the same doors on this one onto the one that doesn't open. Um, well, I don't remember if I set Yongadi to open on only one side or not. We're going back to factory station. So... I don't think we... I don't know if we stop at last chance. I don't think we do. Apparently not. No, we go on off across the bridge.
Now, I can manually open the doors anytime I feel like. So, doing a, a test of manually trying to open the door won't, won't do anything. You just need to see whether or not the door is open. It's the automatic thing that's, that, that's I think, at question here, isn't it? Here we come into Yongity Station, and... Okay, I got it set to open on all sides, apparently. Let's go look at the station. Yeah, it says open all. Um, let's see. Let me stop and think. I think that is going to be west. Yeah, I want to open west only. Um, I want to open uh, west side only. There we go. Isn't it annoying that you got like 50 waypoints on your screen? Uh, it gets a little cluttered sometimes. Um, I'm used to playing with the waypoints though, and I often navigate by them. And I don't always see them. I'm not always aware of them. I can turn them off. Um, I just don't usually. Okay, here's the beeline coming in. And presto, the beeline doors only open on the platform side now. They do not open between cars at this station. You cannot change cars at this station. And for you, it looks distracting. I can, I can understand that. They, 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 there's a lot of stuff popping on and in and out of the, uh, the heads-up display. Um... I'm, I'm very ADD, and, some, and, and my particular ADD, sometimes I just don't notice stuff. It, it, it's like, it's visual noise, and it sort of fades into the background. It, it's, it's like a smell. After a while, you get used to the smell, and you don't notice it anymore. And then somebody else comes in and is like, what's that smell? And also just make it open on every side, yeah. Well, there's no real point, uh, no real need to at this station. Okay, I have succeeded in the in the, the, the big thing I wanted to do on this stream here. Check my time. It is 8.45. I got another hour to go. Cool. We could go have a look at some of the other stuff. Um... We have, I've, I've, at this point, I now have the beeline running. Dang it, Tanisha from Queens is too long, and... Uh, maybe she's from Brooklyn. I can make her Brooklyn Tanisha. Although, you know... See, I think you can make a redstone contraption to close the doors on the other side. Theoretically, theoretically, I hadn't looked into it. I've just, I've been more worried about getting the layout put together, learning how to do the schedules and getting my signals placed, and then trying to start turning this into a proper train layout. Um, let's take a quick tour here. There's, um, first things first, let me think for a second about where my options are and where it might be for waypoint settings. Uh, let's turn off the in-game waypoints. There we go. That better? In game waypoints are off. I see them on the mini map, but I don't see them in Heads Up. I found that out when I used those doors when I was making an elevator. Oh, yeah! Well, that makes sense that you can use redstone signals um, to open and close the those doors with the. Let's see, we got. Um, well, if that's Larry, then I'm not sure who that is. 
coming up. I can't tell them the I can't tell the trains apart. I should have put a colored block on on the front of them. Dag on it. Oh, now we got weather moving in. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Okay. Let's just take a quick bounce here. Um, I'm just going to manually bounce to a couple of places. This thing. Oh, this thing. Um, hang on a second. Give me an engine silencer and let's see if it does any bloody good at all. There we go. That did bring the noise down a little. Ah, oh, that was terrible. Okay. Okay, this particular station um, just has a uh, plat wooden platform. The key thing to this one is that it has a switch box. Not covering it with blocks. Yeah, uh, sorry about that. They're bleeding. I'm sorry. This is another reason why I recommend against this particular mod. I've used it in this mod pack. I will not use it again. It's that damn generator. You've got to like put it in a shed out a ways, uh, and uh, you know, I'm gonna have to put it in a housing or something to to muffle the noise. It's terrible. But it does give me the decorative lights here. Let's, um... There we go. So, yeah, I've got colored lights strung up here, being driven by that modular generator, which is driving an alternator. Here comes our train. Let's see which train this is. This one is Clickety Bronx Larry. Uh, we want to leave Bronx Larry alone. Ouch! Forgot I turned off my jetpack. Bloody heck. I get so used to having the thing on and then I turn it off and yeah, I end up splatting. Okay, that was that was just utterly graceless. The refinery loop coming in where we will see we can see there. Let's take a jump here. There we go. You can see that the fluid interface has connected there and the tank filled up. This tank is way larger. By the way, Beekeeper, I got a ton of stock on the Cobblemon server. Oh, hi, you're Ginger from the Cobblemon server. Now I know who you are. Yay. Heck of a thonking. Yes. The lights are fun, but I'm not sure that they're worth the thonking. That's, that's just dreadful. It's absolutely dreadful. We're going to grab the Bamboo Express as the next, uh, and, and not hang about here. This is, this is awful. We'll go around to Trading Point, which is not much better. Trading Point's not going to be any better. Ugh, why, what am I thinking? Bail, whoops. Well, I'm going to bail here. Boop. Okay. And here's the refinery. How's the refinery doing? The refinery is doing fabulously well. Look at that. That front is so ugly. Front of which is so ugly? The, the front of the refinery? I 
I have not put any sort of building over the refinery, and that's something that's on my list of stuff to do. There should be like a factory. Oh, from the bamboo train. The bamboo train is a little glitchy. I think there was a, a block missing. I'm not sure. Hello, kitty. Hi, kitty, kitty. I don't have a fish for you. I'm sorry. I don't think I have a fish for you. Let me see. Uh, oh, I do have fish. Okay, you can tell. Where'd you go? Here, kitty, kitty. Fish? Fish? Best friends forever. This is now my cat. Great. I fed it, now it's mine. Great. Okay. But you have an axe. Let's see, not refinery. Looks cool. Uh, but you have an axe. I have a lot of tools. Um, let's see. Uh, Tom's simple storage mod being the primary one. Oh yeah, there it is. Um, I don't know. It, it, it does look like maybe there's something missing right around there. I don't know. It's relatively accurate to a um, narrow to the narrow gauge locomotives that are still used in India. Oh, an axe to kill the cat. Ah, uh, if he didn't have fish. Cut back on the front. Yeah, it, it, it seems like like maybe there's there's something. I don't know. Just say. Just say. This station I'm uh, rather pleased with. Uh, this one I've done up in brick and got a proper waiting room and a ticket booth over here. What do we got coming in? Is this? Please let this be the right one. Yes, it is. Okay, we are going to edit this and we're going to ch uh, change this to Brooklyn so that it will fit on the sign. There we go. It's going to say Oasis Station right now because uh, the train has to go around. There we go. It has to reread. Or it'll oh no. You didn't get hit by the train, did you? Oh, that would be bad. Yeah, maybe you should come in here. Come in here. Come on in here. Come in here, cat. Come on. I'm in here. Realize that I am in here. And cat wanders off and goes to go dance out on the catwalk. That seems like an appropriate place for a cat to dance. Um, sit there. That'll do. That'll keep you from getting hit by the train, Doofus. Bet you can't click your tongue at the kitties. Let's see, you want to see my base. How does your base look? Okay, well, let's do a time set noon to wake it up. And... It's going to take a while for any of these trains to come around. Let's just bounce over to the cactus farm. Because this is my base. Uh, Jetpack does not need to be recharged. I'm going to turn it off for a minute. So the base started out with one of these farm desert farm structures. The building is originally from the Immersive Structures mod. Um, I strongly recommend Immersive Structures. I also really love Repurposed Structures. Both of them add a good deal of variety that works with, van with the vanilla aesthetic if you're still you know, very deeply into the vanilla aesthetic. Repurposed structures takes existing Minecraft structures and redoes them in other materials. Uh, your bases on Cobble Mon are nicer. Yeah, well, yeah, of course they are. This is a single-player world. 
This one was built for convenience so that I could build the trains. Uh, I just hermit crabbed into an existing building. This was originally a uh, melon barn. I replanted it so that I could have tomatoes because I have Farmer's Delight in this mod pack because it allows me to put to trellis my tomatoes. And I, I dearly love that particular detail about uh, Farmer's Delight, that it allows me to put my tomatoes up on trellises. Um, down here, usual thing. Um, boil, I got a boiler going. The boiler is way the heck out from the house and on a beach on bare stone because... I've had a boiler explode. Your builds are way, way better on Cobblemon. I put more effort into the appearance on Cobblemon. Um, again, this, this base is built for my convenience. It is not built for attractiveness. Uh, this is a barn full of chests for the Tom's Simple Storage mod. It's, it's what runs the little handheld I'm carrying. Yeah, the machinery is just all sitting out in the open, and this is very industrial. On the other hand, that whole industrial appearance is appropriate to the railway thing. You know, this is effectively the rail yard, and have you ever been to a rail yard? They're, they're kind of grungy, industrial... By the way, I applied for gym leader, and I might use your gym if I get accepted. Okay, I would love to have a gym leader move into one of my gyms. I've, I've, got, I've got three arenas, and have, would love to have somebody move into one of them. You know, like here, I've done more work on this build, on this particular uh, station, to put in the switch box up over the rails. Because you are going to have... The best one is on Lithia. Lithia um, Lazardo Hydrus did the original work on the, L, on the Water Vader and the High Street. I put in most of the buildings. Um, I put in the, uh, the tavern and the Dwarven Emporium. Uh, I built the, gym, the arena there. You can start st streaming Kamalon too. Oh boy. I don't do enough on Cobblemon right now to be have anything to stream. Uh, this one needs a rebuild and needs that bloody generator. I'm not sure putting the generator behind... didn't get to the mic quick enough. Had a sneeze. Wow. Here, the generator is back in here behind, st uh, behind granite. It's just not closed off. I wonder what would happen to the sound. Let's see. Granite, 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 granite. Uh, ba -da -ba -ba. Granite. That didn't do bloody anything. The sound comes right through the granite wall. Ugh. That's just exasperating. Let's see, someone, I think it was, uh, made an XP farm using Create. Yes, you can, in fact, uh, there is um, a Create Enchant, I think, mod that includes the ability to create liquid XP. Let's see, this is Henry Station, which is still set to open on all sides. Um, that That's... That, yeah, I've worked with that mod a little bit. Um, 
I haven't done much with it. Don't really uh, know it very well. But yeah, there's an XP drain. If you drop stuff on the XP drain, it drains the XP out of them. Uh, be careful. Don't step on it by accident. It'll clear your XP bar, and now it's all in the tank. Hello, cat. I'm not going to stop here. Sorry. Oh, the refinery needs a better design. I really don't like that cluster of barrels on top of the ethanol tank. You can just use normal pipe, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's create, uh, it is, um, it's something you got, uh... Well, the liquid XP I've only seen with that particular mod, which is, it's part of the create suite, but it's not part of base create. I, I really don't think that, uh, I don't know, we could look it up. XP. Uh, there's nugget of experience, block of experience, and that's it. In the base create, there is no liquid XP. Just make it look like a nuclear power plant. Yeah. About to make these bloody generators look like a nuclear power plant. Good grief. Let me ride this on around. Were you, were you on... I don't think you were on when I was over at Castle Station where I've just finished the shed build. I'm going to ride it on around, ride this train on around to there. Now, I do have some other stuff that I'm probably going to get into in just a few minutes. Um, I've worked with some other stuff besides Create... This is Melon Barn Station, which is another of the desert farms. This one's unmodified, so you can see what they look like uh, before I, before you know, players start fucking with them. That one has three of these little castle out structures. I have no idea what they're used for. There was nothing in them. I've had. Uh, I've, I've got some other stuff that I've been working with trying to work toward basically railroading in Minecraft. Um, trying to get in more. I keep building railroads, so I've decided, all right, fine, I'm going to do get into the, the into the train mods. So I've been working a lot with Create Trains, uh, learning how to use it, and getting some of the builds. Uh, what are your PC specs? I'm running on a uh, Lenovo IdeaPad laptop. It's a, van uh, a vanilla uh, Lenovo IdeaPad. I'm running MX Linux rather than Windows. And that's, that's pretty much it. I don't have any sort of fancy graphics card or anything. It's just a laptop. Here we are at the passenger shed here at the castle, which... Yeah, another of those bloody thumping generators. Um, remember if I put a muffler on this one or not. Lordy, you certainly need to... Let's go over... Okay, so we're on the passenger platform here. I got a 4060 and it's so laggy. Yeah. Create is running just fine. I'm running single player and what's really going to trip your uh, mind here is that I've also got three chunk loaders running in this game world. And I've got five trains running on the tracks. Now, I'm running a little warm. I've got a tachometer. Oops, that's why I turned off the bloody jet engine earlier. There we go. Let's come around to the, uh, the cargo and maintenance platform. I'm rather proud of this build. I think it's got a better level of detail and a bit more care taken in it. 
It looks more like an actual railway shed, like an actual railway platform. There's a WH Smith's kiosk, there's seating, there's a ticket booth, warning signage. Let's come down here and... No, it's already got a muffler on it. It's just directly under the platform, and that was my error. I'm... I'm not using the diesel generators mod ever again. It's, that, that, if nothing else, that bloody thumping. The warning signage is, um, I think from the Create Steam and Rails pack. Um, there's, there's a whole set of decals. You make them in a stone cutter from Iron Sheet. If we go downstairs, um, of course, you know, there has to be a smoking area. And, and yeah, I added a little hang signage. I need to put mesh fencing across here. I was using copper in here, wasn't I? No, I'm using zinc. Okay. My catwalking and such is still zinc. Have I got any... Oh, all I've got is industrial iron and copper. I'll use industrial iron. looks ugly. Yes, it does. It's the underneath of a railway station. They are typically gross. Um, there's, there may be some influence here from the time I spent in New York. So we've been around here a bit. Let's go back to the cactus farm. And I'm going to uh, pause for just a second here and let us go to the break screen for a second while I trade out this Minecraft world for another one because I'd like to spend, I've got about another half hour before I need to start working on getting a VPN to Finland so that I can watch Eurovision. Um, let's see. Let's go look at Industry Craft. Industry Craft was something I got into and looked at and worked through and then realized it was not going to go where I needed it to. But it's a, a, a pretty strong approach to a tech mod. So we're gonna, uh, pause, we're gonna sit here on, the, on this pause screen for just a moment. This allows me to um, point out that I do have a uh, historical fiction piece that I'm working on, uh, a novel called Bread Spotting. It's uh, 
being published in Dickensian fashion as a serial. And is currently on episode 22 of an ep expected... Um, Go. We'll flip back over to here. Single player and I see test O2. And off we go. Twenty two episodes so far completed out of an expected thirty. So bringing it in for a landing in the not too distant future. Uh, published a little bit irregularly uh, as my capability uh, is, is is available it's one dollar a month to get in on it and if you pay that buck you get the whole th uh, whole thing so far you know all 22 episodes thus far uh, when uh, when the last episode goes up I am going to uh, uh, work on a, a unified version but that may be a little while it's going to take a, an assembled draft and all sorts of things. So industry craft starts with rubber trees. You start by collecting sticky resin from the rubber trees and dealing with flying resin that bounces all over the place. It's rubber. What do you expect? So we start with a grove of rubber trees. Eventually, you have enough resin that you can start doing some other things, some things with it, and then you start growing hemp. This is industrial hemp. It is used for all sorts of things, including wire insulation, a little bit of wheat growing at the back because I needed it, and from there we start doing things like making water mills. These are little bitty water wheels, basically and they feed into an accumulator called a bat box. It's a battery box. The accumulator here is storing 40,000 EU, um, which is a respectable little charge. It'll do a few things. From there, of course, we have to go get into um, auto farming. Now here, um, the bat box, a bat box there uh well it should be that, that's a transformer we're getting right bat boxes are over there for accumulating this is all solar powered we'll get to that that is glow shrooms and they have to be directly under uh glowstone in order to come to fruition we have stick reed, which uh, makes resin and various other things. We have all sorts of wonderful things pouring into your uh, dyes and wheat and glowstone dust and sticky resin so that we don't have to chase the bloody bouncing resin. There is down there a bat box for an accumulator. Dry, uh, we have a crop matron, which is automatically feeding weed killer and fertilizer to these crops and basically acting like an agricarnation in, in Botania. Now, there's the auto harvester, which, yeah, I mean, we've seen auto harvesters in other mods. Up here, a little electric thrum. We have, oh right, I do have a jetpack in this, i got to remember, it's, it's not a hover mode. We have solar panels connected with tin cable over to the central uh, accumulator, which has some tension going on it. What mod launcher are you using? I am using Prism Launcher. Um, I've been using Prism Launcher since its inception which doesn't it sounds more impressive than it is. Um, it was originally another launcher that um, had a rogue developer um, who disliked the uh, diversity statement in the development uh, on, in the development agreement. Who who hijacked the thing? And within 24 hours, Prism Launcher had re been rebranded with a rainbow logo and was back up and. The rogue developer with his older version of the code base was 
forgotten about. That's a generator there, by the way, that's making that hum. The generator burns coal to create electricity. It is supplementing the uh, solar panels. You'll notice it's not running most of the time. I dislike that I have to have it. But the crop matron used a bit more energy here than I, than I expected. I have, once again, hermit crab into uh, an existing place. I found a sandstone mansion. Oh yeah, Prism uh, is a wonderful community. Um, sandstone mansion there is from the repurposed structures mod. Uh, as I said earlier, it takes existing Minecraft structures and redoes them in other materials and other biomes. This one's been rather heavily modified. I uh, put up my own lighting, and um, that's a water tank up there, which is being fed by this pipe. Pipe goes out this way, and that's a high-capacity pipe in order to... Uh, a pressure pipe, and... Uh, in order to, so that it doesn't have to have a pump on it so for that distance feeds to this water tank which is driven by this little generator back here generator pump puddle presto water supply for the mansion the mansion has running water have you ever tried Curse Forge? I have tried the Curse Forge launcher. I'm not real fond of it. Um, I like Prism Launcher. Prism works uh, well with Curse Forge mod packs. It works with Modrinth mod packs. It works with a lot of other things. It's um, it, it's really it's done everything I needed it to do. Let's flit around a little bit here. Just because we can, I'm going to fly to the front. We'll take a peek up here. There is a big solar farm up here. There is a really big solar farm up here. Each of these sections of solar panels feeds to a battery box, which feeds through glass fiber cable, which has more capability. I'm using cheap copper cable. Uh, to connect the solar panels to the bat box, and then the more expensive high-capacity glass fiber to connect to the big accumulators. Something is sucking a lot of power. We got over here, we've got uh, the accumulators coming in to a high-voltage accumulator, and over here to liquid fuel generators, which uh, are able to supplement. This is a rocket miner. This is a cool thing. This this thing basically is an automated... Modrinth is kind of the same, but it doesn't make you launch from the original MC launcher. It just boots it up instantly. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, I haven't used the original Minecraft launcher in a long time. I've been using Prism Launcher. Um, it organizes my instances, allows me to group them. Um, I could probably show it it's if I fiddled around with my OBS setting a bit. The Rocket Miner is kind of a neat thing. Um, it actually will fly off and take care and, and go do mining. And it'll when its inventory is full, then it comes back. Using Feather for playing vanilla Minecraft. Um, there's why that one's blinking. Uh, these. That one's running a little bit. Battery station. Where are the batteries for this? Where did I put them? Up here? No, that's just um, a hazmat suit uh, that, that I'm wearing. Let's see. I should point out that I am wearing a hazmat suit. This is a rubber suit which allows me to run around on these wires without being electrocuted. Something I absolutely had to, uh, to build uh, early on. 
Let's see. Battles over here. Various pieces, parts, supplies for for stuff that I was building. Mining equipment, etc., etc. The rocket miner is kind of a cool toy. We're not going to play with it right now. Let's head down. Kitty. Uh, is anything on this floor? Down here. Here is my Tom's simple storage. Put a little bit of equipment running. This is a mass fabricator currently not running. It makes v uh, very expensive stuff. Let's see, run on the cables without a hazmat suit. No, thank you. Um, I don't want to respawn right now. This is the high, high voltage uh, equipment room. There's a chunk loader in here. It's electrically powered. And that's the transformer that steps down the current from the high voltage coming in off the uh, main. I d uh, you know, I've got the a high voltage transformer there so that I can run the bolt crafter. Bolt crafter is a heck of a piece of equipment. This is all alcohol that has been uh, processed from the through the from the refinery, and so that liquid fuel generator is running on alcohol, uh, which burns actually relatively cleanly. It's, it's not carbon neutral, but at least it's a lot uh, easier on the environment than coal. Holy crap! Various other equipment over here that makes various things. Uh, the, Binaries and so forth, processing equipment. I mean, it's all material processing. Most of the tech mods come down to material uh, processing. <coughs> Drink some alcohol. Oh, give me a minute. Let's see. Chest with some various other... There's the quantum armor, which I was not impressed with. Uh, the armor configurator, wood gas and fire. This thing just uh, turns wood into um, wood gas uh, that you can use as fuel. It's a cheap fuel. I've, been, I've used it in the generator to drive the industrial work table. The industrial work table is a very cool thing, and I would have used it a lot more if I didn't have Tom's simple storage in this mod pack. It has its own inventory. It can remember recipes. It's got auto crafting capability. It has recursive auto crafting, which is just an amazing thing. So that it, if it's missing a component, if it knows the recipe for that component, it'll just go make it. Let's see the ex various pieces of equipment: the electric furnace, um, which is the replacement for for the coal burning. Uh, Couple generators, macerator, compressor, various pieces of equipment that do different things. The canning machine makes canned food. Among it also will uh, package uh, alcohol into fuel cans. Let's see. You wanted to see the booze. We have a drug and alcohol warning on this stream for reasons. One being that some of the mods that I play. Make booze. I have here some whiskey that is uh, still aging. Mine is sand. Uh, what's your favorite mod? Mine is sandwichable. My favorite mod? Oh gosh. Um, probably Chinjufu. I I, I have a, a love of it that that is is somewhat unreasonable. So yeah, we have whiskey aging. We have uh, previously made various types of beer. Let's see, what's this? This is whiskey also. Okay, various. What I'm going to do is sample one of these and see if it's ready to, to drink. So I'll get a tap. And we'll get a mu some mugs here. This is whiskey. I could probably put it in a glass. Let's see. Well, let's just go tap one of these and see if it's any good yet. Whiskey takes a long time to age. So, what did we get? We got whiskey. Sub-zero. Um, 
it's it's whiskey. That's about all that can be said for it. I'm gonna knock the tap off of it. Untap that. And we oui. there we go. There is the effect of the whiskey. You were wanting the effect of the of booze. Here is the effect of drinking whiskey. Uh, this is about as drunk as you can get. The, uh, once the effect, it, it's it's an either or effect. What's actually done with this stuff is it's taken to the refinery and dropped in. Let's see, I've already tapped this barrel. Let's go and clean out this barrel and see how much I get from it. Ah, uh, this is really not easy to do. Ugh. All right, come on. How much am I going to get out of this one? 30 glasses. And then that one is empty. So I'm going to chop it. And put stuff away. Put away the scaffold. Put away the barrel. Put away the tap. Put away the empty glasses. And we will take the... 30 glasses of whiskey here. Now that I can maneuver again. Over to this refinery. And I'm going to take this uh, these glasses of whiskey and drop them in there. And kapop. We are now making alcohol. You're extracting the alcohol from the whiskey and sending it off to the tank. Yes, we should be. Where is it going? Come on. Showing up here. Not of may not be as many millet buckets. Uh, drink whiskey that's not done. It doesn't actually do anything. Uh, what you get, it says it's watery, and then it doesn't do anything. It's, it's terrible. Drinking the pure alcohol is not possible. It can only be piped and canned and uh, put in engines. Sorry. Sorry to disappoint, but... <clears throat> Yeah, Industry Craft does have booze production. You want serious booze production? Okay. Give me a second here. Right with you. To Zaki on launch. Find the right instance. Bring it up. This will take just a moment. Let's see, let us go to the break card so that we're not looking at just a black screen for uh, for all this time. And give it a second, give it a second. Uh, let's see. This, this, this does take a minute to come up. This is a an extensive mod pack. What I'm bringing up is a mod pack with the Chinjufu mod. Chinjufu is a Japanese cultural mod written by a Japanese developer who wanted to see more of his own culture and history in Minecraft. It has a lot to it like a lot a lot 
I have packaged it with Botania, uh, Ars Nouveau, and Mystic Agriculture, and um, a little of this, that, and the other. You'll see. I was going for a sort of Miyazaki type of world. This will be running under Minecraft 1.18.2 for various reasons, one being that it's been a while. Oh, you can make booze in it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I'm going to show you. Just be patient. There is booze, and there is consumable booze, and there is even a bloody... Let me... Here we go. I want to go to New Magic 01. And let us switch over to game screen. Uh, I should tell you that uh, at the age of 61, I have lost a lot of interest in booze and alcohol. Um, I was always a cheap date to begin with. And um, I haven't had a hangover in a very long time because I simply don't consume that much. Okay, loading up, loading up, loading up, riffing for time. Oh, I've been watching Amadeus do this for five hours a night. That that man is going to be exhausted. The guy who's running the uh, Italian Nationals, you're not even 18. Shame on you. Are you at least European and not American? Okay, back to game. Here we go. Here we are in my bedroom. Let's see. Give it a moment. It's going to take a moment before it starts running smoothly. Yeah, in the middle of Europe. There we go. Okay, so I'm not running afoul of, of, of the stupid uh, American uh, be uh, alcohol laws. So this is my bedroom in, the, uh, in, the, in this mansion. Uh, a lot of the furnishings come from the Chinjifu mod. The windows have all been replaced. The windows actually work. The chest of drawers holds clothing. Uh, my character is currently in more sort of traditional clothing. The, the Supremium boots were, are needed because of the no fall damage thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got no patience. Okay, enchanting room. We'll get there. We'll get there. We got to walk there, okay? There, there's, there's some stuff going on here. This mansion has a lot going on. Not the least of which is that I went through and replaced all the windows with proper ones. Let's see, around this side, and yeah, around this side there's some auto-crafting going on. This is with Create. You've seen Create Mechanical Crafters before, I'm sure. These are each making different kinds of wood from the wood essence growing out front in the uh, garden, in the mystical agri mystic agriculture garden. From downstairs, and here's the first part of how to make alcohol. These are komakoji shelves. You, this is where you make rice malt. Making sake takes a lot of rice malt. It also takes yeast culture, which must be cultured. You have to put sugar and apples in jars and put them up for a while for them to turn into yeast. Over here, I'm making nori. That doesn't have anything to do with, with making booze, but I thought, hey, oh, what the heck. This is the kitchen. This is our kitchen. We have a proper irori set into the floor so that I can uh, cook with a donabe. But I also have a modern cooktop um, with uh, a uh, teapot for making tea. And up there are some of my, is some of my stock. Those are bottles of booze that have been made. Let's just reach up here and... This is a bottle of aged wine. 
be I have here I have aged cider I have sake I have aged sake I have aged mead the brewery well let's walk around here and show you the uh, fermentation room in the mansion first because this is where I did my early work this is all stuff laid down for, uh, for fermentation uh, mead currently in barrels this is sake, in it, which takes multiple stages. Uh, you have to make maromi, and then uh, and and you have to make shubo, and it's it's a process. Do -do 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 -do. Let us go to. You wanted to see the brewery. Let's go over to the village and see the brewery, because the brewery is a bit more impressive. Maybe let's look. Go see it. Mystic Agriculture, Ars Nouveau, etc., yada yada. And we fly over here. There's some Create Trains going on and some Japanese architecture. There's a lot of shops here and there's a shrine out at the other end of town. But uh, we are going this direction because over here ah. is the Sake House. We'll go in there in a few minutes. Waystone. Busy place. Here we have the Kurzerd Brewery. Village of Kurzerd. I did not name it. The Waystones did. There is the brewery up front and the aging house back in the back. It starts with... Let's close the door to keep those guys out. It starts with donabe. These are donabe with raw rice. First thing you do is you cook rice, and you cook rice, and you cook rice, and you make cook rice until you are ready to scream. Because you will need so much rice. Now I've only got about five minutes here before I have to sign off and go put my VPN up to Finland so that I can go watch the uh, Eurovision final. The uh, Finland national final is today, and I'm extremely excited about that, and I will not be late for it. Uh, that's charcoal for running th the Aurori. This is the private reserve fermentation barrel, a private reserve fermentation barrel here, with aged sake. Over here, I have komakoji shelves. We have vents there. The, uh, we can open the windows for when we're cooking because it makes a lot of steam and smoke. And you cook rice and you craft with, you know, with the komakoji and so forth. I've got videos up for it. Why is the furnace red? Because it's a supremium furnace. It's been enhanced with mystical uh, with mystic agriculture alloys, so that it runs a lot faster. You make shubo, and you put shubo, your shubo barrels down to age, and when they are ready, you take them up and you make maromi. And when your maromi is ready, you take it up and you make sake, and then you put the sake down to age. And I have videos on YouTube that show this entire process. It is somewhat lengthy. I will warn you. What you're after, and what I'm going to close this with, is going up to the sake house. Here is our sake house. It is a lovely little sake house. There's a bar here with, uh, we have a, bar, a bottle of aged wine and a bottle of aged sake. And we can get, let's see, where are, send me on the, are my, oops, here, here we go, drink glass, let us get a drink glass. You take a drink glass and you right click the sake bottle, and now it is a glass with aged sake in it, and we can consume the sake. Hurrah. We have consumed the sake. Would you like a rice cracker to go with it? I have a tray here of rice crackers, and you can actually take the rice crackers. Theoretically, it would be nice if you could eat the rice crackers, but, you know. You want to see wine. You want to see wine. Well, here is aged wine. 
I get a different form of uh, the glass grows a stem when you fill it. Drinking it, however, has the same effect as the sake. So yeah, we have um, arrived here. We have taken a seat at a comfy little table in the sake house where we have a potbelly stove keeping it warm and we have various varieties of things. There's also food available here to a limited extent and there's an upstairs because, you know, you have to have an upstairs in order for the fight scene uh, and the guy getting thrown over the railing. We've all seen the, 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 that movie, I'm sure. They all can't go into a tea house without somebody getting thrown over the railing. It has been fun. It has been enjoyable. And we've gone through a couple of mods. We've gone through a couple of things. I do have... Um, let me see. Where is... I don't... Oops, that was not the thing I meant to do. Let's tab and let's leave you on. Over to here and flip over to the end break card and to my channel, to the playlist. As I do have here a link without site tracking. Thank you. Let us drop this. There we go. There is the link to my YouTube, which has the uh, Chinjifu mod uh, tutorials. There is one on cooking rice. There is one on growing rice. And then there is one on making sake because growing rice, I didn't even get into um chinjifu includes the patty system you actually have to build rice patties and grow rice in patties and dry it on a bamboo rack um it's a whole thing the the the, the dev has recreated the whole process so yeah hey thanks for the sub appreciate it yay welcome We'll be uh, you'll be getting a notice then uh, tomorrow night, uh, my time, as I'll be streaming Roots of Pacha on Sunday nights. Roots of Pacha is a farm sim about a Neolithic people discovering agriculture. Uh, right now my character is learning how to domesticate animals. It's been interesting. I'm the Wandering Beekeeper. Uh, your companionship on this journey has been most appreciated. It's always nice to have people drop in, especially given the, the weird hour that I'm streaming right now. Um, I will be... I don't know if it's on Game Pass or not. Um, I play on, on uh, Linux, so I, I don't know. I don't have a console. I don't own a console. Everything is on Linux. I'll be here next week doing more Create Trains. We'll be getting into MTR very soon, in which you do not build trains, you build railways. It's an entire thing. No, it's not. I'm sorry. Bummers. Brutes of Pacha is a very new game. It's only on version like 1.1.4. Um, it, it's, it's a very new game. I'm really trying to push it but we'll see it you can drop in and see it i'll be here tomorrow night 8 30 p.m utc minus six with more of uh the things that i that i like to do see you tomorrow